hello again everybody and welcome to my video this week i thought this week and probably for the next couple of weeks we could look at working on a seascape and if i do a little bit each week and take it step by step those of you who would like to uh, actually join in and have a go can uh, can follow what i do each week and then practice during the week yourselves and hopefully then you'll have a piece that's finished at the end of a few weeks so basically i'm going to do a smallish one which makes it much more manageable for everybody so this mount um, has an aperture of four four by eight and what i've done is i've popped that onto my piece of linen and i have just drawn around to give myself the template to work to so with seascapes um you can do lots of things, but what I'm going to do is keep it nice and simple because that's the way that you're going to get the best results. So first of all, what we're looking at is having um, a, a, a portion, probably about a quarter of the length, um, that is actually sky. Um, so basically, I've chosen this bit of faded denim, my daughter's old jeans great for this sort of thing um, because it's not a matte finish all the way across there's variations where the jean has faded so that gives a bit more realistic look to the sky so what i do is i've cut that out and i just give it a spray and that's using the 505 spray give that a spray there and then i just overlap it just pop it on there just overlapping the top of that mark a little bit so hopefully you can see that and then um, it's a case of cutting lots of different strips of fabric in various color blues now then I've pre-cut these because I shall be watching me forever cutting out pieces and if I can just lift this I'll show you what we've got so this is what we've got here um, all sorts of fabric um, and all sorts of shades of blue that go together um, as you can see some fabrics are patterned some are plain that doesn't matter at all it's about getting similar shades of blue so that you get something that looks very coherent together so if we can start at the top that's very small fine dots on there that's a cotton fabric then we're coming down to here which is some um, dyed sari uh, remnant sari silk and then we've got plain cotton and then we've got these spotty cottons here and then we've got some um, cotton fabric that has actually got words printed on it but it's very very faint so it's ideal for just giving a bit of interest this is a very pale I don't even know if you can see the dots on here but there are very pale little dots there a little bit more dotty and then this at the bottom is just like a, a, a sort of a satiny sort of chiffony type material. Um, it drapes quite well, but that is just going to go at the bottom. So I've lined those up in the way that I want to put them onto my piece of art. What I will say is they all measure roughly about a centimetre just over in width. You don't need to be precise about it it's just a case of getting them roughly the same sort of width but you can alter that slightly by overlapping them a bit more or a bit less depending on how you want it to look so i'm going to stand this up now and hopefully not topple you over there you go so i'm starting at the top and i'm taking one strip at a time and i'm just giving it a little spray and then overlapping that bit there and just pressing that down so that it's nice and straight so that you've got a nice straight horizon and then we take the next piece and then I'm not putting it the, the rough edge down I'm putting the smooth edge and you just want to overlap it by about halfway and like I say, you can overlap it more or less. It depends on the size of the piece of artwork you're doing as well. So then I'm going to overlap that there. They don't have to be all perfectly straight. That one is slightly slanting down because the sea has ripples and waves and um, you can actually uh, incorporate that 
into your piece of work. So you can see how I'm building that up now. Just keep going here for you a minute. And you can put two things together. That's grey spots and blue spots, but that's fine. Then we've got our little bit of cotton paper with the writing, uh, cotton fabric with the writing on. Beg your pardon, bring that up like that. And don't forget you can use the backs of fabrics as well as the fronts. So if you like the colour but you think it's a bit harsh, try turning it over and seeing what it looks like on the other side. So we'll slope that one slightly like that. Make sure when you're spraying this that you've got plenty of ventilation. You can use Bonder Web. I prefer not to, but that's a personal preference. And then finally, we will pop this on. It can be really tricky to pick up sometimes. And also very sticky. There we are. And that just goes on there like that. Now then, if you notice this piece here, I've actually sort of curved that slightly. That is the piece that is going to represent that wash that comes in and just gradually sort of fades out to the sand. So what we're going to do now, I'll just hold that up so that you can see that. So that's all in place. And then what you need to do then is to actually stitch all that in place. So I've got my clear thread on my machine. Um, I find clear thread really useful for this because as you've got various shades, you can actually just use the clear thread to just stitch everything in place whereas else you've got to keep changing your thread so that the, the stitching isn't quite so seen. So I'll just pull those bits out there. Right, so I'm just going to set up now on my machine. Just bring that forward a bit so that you can see. And we start here. And pull that up through as normal, tuck it underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up and down each strip just to secure it in place. You're not providing any detail at the moment, you just want it to stay where it is. So we're just going to run that, so off we go again, as usual. And you just want to go just in over the top and then stitch this. There, go down to the next level. Try stitching as near to the top line as you can. It will give you a much better finish. Then down to the next level. If you go a bit wobbly, it doesn't matter. Stitching each of these down as we go. reason for that. Just clip these a moment so that we can push that back. So there that's all stitched. This is stuck but not stitched here. I don't know if I can show you this here. That's unstitched along the bottom. That is because the rest of this is going to be sand and to be able to put the sand in and get that lovely rippled effect coming out like you do when the sea washes in you're going to need to uh, lift this and pop the sandy colored strips underneath 
and then they will stay in place and you don't stitch along this bottom it gives you a much more natural tied line then so that's basically all I'm going to do today I'm going to cut all my threads and things um, I want to do it slowly so that you've got a, an opportunity to take it all in um, what I'm going to do next week is we will start to add coloured organzas and chiffons to the sea to help blend it a little bit more and to actually um, give it that shimmery glistening effect um, so that's what we're going to do next week um, but for now that's basically all we're going to do this week I'd love to know if you're going to have a go. I'd love to know how you get on as well. So do send me your photographs and tune in next week when we'll be looking at the next stage. Um, thank you for joining me and um, enjoy your sewing. Thank you.